As the days grew longer and warmer, the girls went for walks and worked in their garden. They also played their games. One of their favorite games was to have a club where they met every week to talk about what they saw and heard. This was just like the Pitchwick Club that they read about in a book. They also wrote a little newspaper for the club. At one of their meetings, they decided that Lowry could join the club as well, and he came to their meetings. He made a letterbox between his house and the March house, and they often put things like garden seeds, books, and letters in it for each other. They didn't know that one day it would hold many love letters. At the beginning of June. Meg and Joe both had a long holiday. The King family went to the beach for three months, and Aunt March went to Plumfield. Both girls were very happy to have a rest from their work. What are you going to do? asked Amy. Meg said that she was going to stay in bed late every morning and do nothing. Joe said she was going to read books and play with Lowry. Beth and Amy decided they would stop their lessons too and rest like their sisters. You may try it for one week," said Mummy. "I think you will discover that all play and no work is as bad as all work and no play." The next morning, Meg came down late for breakfast. The house was untidy. Then she sat and thought about the dresses she would buy this summer. Joe played with Lowry at the river, and then read a book in the afternoon. Beth began to tidy up her doll cupboard, but she got tired and went to play her piano. Amy sat in the garden to draw. She went for a walk and got wet in the rain. In the evening, they agreed that it had been a nice day, though it seemed quite long. Mummy and Hannah. Did the work that the girls usually did. The days became longer and longer, and the girls grew bored. By Friday night, each of the girls thought it had been a very long week. On Saturday, Mummy decided to teach the girls a lesson. She gave Hannah a holiday and did nothing herself to see what the girls would do. She told the girls it was her turn to have a rest. They should look after themselves. The girls were quite happy about this. It felt good to have some work to do after their long, boring week. They made some breakfast for Mummy, but it tasted so bad that she couldn't eat it. Then, Joe decided that she would cook dinner and sent an invitation to Lowry. Meg began to tidy the house. Beth began to cry. Because she forgot to give their canary any food or water, she found it lying dead in its cage. They decided to have a funeral for it. Joe went to the kitchen and began to wash the dishes and prepare dinner. The fire went out, and she had to light it again. She went to the shop to buy some food, but she chose bad food. Sally Gardner came to visit Meg. And an old lady called Miss Crocker came to have dinner with them. Mummy went out. Joe worked hard in the kitchen, but she did everything badly. Some of the food was not cooked long enough, while some other food was cooked too long. Nobody could eat it. She put salt instead of sugar on the fruit. Joe was about to cry when she saw Lowry looking at her. He was laughing. They all began to laugh. They had some bread and butter. After dinner, they held a funeral for Pip, the canary. After the funeral, they all worked as fast as they could to clean the house. By evening, they were very tired. Mummy came home. Would you like another week of doing no work? She asked them. No, was the answer. Work is good for you, and play is good for you too," said Mummy. "You must have some of each in your life. That is how to make good use of time."
"Yes, Mummy," said the girls. "We won't forget," and they didn't. Every day, Beth went to the letter box that Lowry had made. She loved doing this. One day, she came in with her hands full. Lowry sent some flowers to Mummy. Meg received a letter and a glove. Why is there only one glove? Meg said. Since the letter wasn't in Lowry's handwriting, it appeared to be from his teacher, Mr. Brook. It translated a German song into English. Joe received two letters. One was from Mummy, who praised her trying to control her temperature. The other was from Lowry. Who invited all the girls to come and have a picnic lunch with him and the Vaughan children the next day? The Vaughans were visiting from England, and he wanted them to meet the girls. Mister Brook would come too, he said. The next day was bright and sunny, and the girls went to meet the Vaughan children. Kate was the oldest and was older than Meg. Fred and Frank were twins of Joe's age. Frank had a bad leg and had to use a crutch. Grace was nine or ten years old. Sally Gardner and her older brother Ned also came on the picnic. They rowed up the river to Long Meadow in two boats. It was not far. They played some games on the short grass. Joe was angry when she saw that Fred Vaughan cheated, but she controlled her anger and won the game. Mister Brook called them all for lunch. They made a fire, and they had a lot of very nice things to eat. They sat and talked and played games all afternoon, and learned a lot about the visitors from England. Even Beth joined in and talked with Frank about animals in America. And England. At the end of the day, they put everything in the boats and rowed back to Lowry's house. It was a lovely day for everyone. One day, Lowry saw the girls come out of their house and go through the back gate towards the river. They were carrying cushions, books, drawing paper, and sewing bags. He wondered where they were going and decided to follow them. They went to some trees and sat there, drawing and reading and sewing. When Lowry saw them, he felt sad that he had no brothers or sisters. Beth noticed him and asked him to join them. "Why are you sitting here?" he asked. They told him that Mummy wanted them to be outside as much as possible during summer, but they remembered how important it was to work. That's why they decided to come outside to do some work. They invited him to work with them. He read to them while they drew and sewed. They looked at the beautiful view. Far away, over the river, there were mountains. The sky was blue. They talked about their dreams and hopes. Lowry wanted to travel around the world and then spend all his time playing music. Meg wanted to have lots of money and pretty clothes, with servants to do what she told them. Joe wanted lots of horses and books and lots of time to write. Beth wanted to stay home safe with her father and mother and play her little piano. Amy wanted to go to Rome and be a famous artist. They decided to meet in ten years to see if their dreams came true. Lowry was unhappy because his grandfather wanted him to go to college and become a businessman, but he didn't like business. He wanted to play music. The girls thought that his grandfather would change his mind and allow him to be a musician. In October, the days began to be colder and shorter. Joe sat in her room and wrote her stories. One day. She took two of her stories and went into town to the newspaper office. She didn't tell anyone that she was going there. Lowry, however, was in a building across the road, and he saw her. 
he surprised Joe and walked back home with her. She told him her secrets about the stories. The man in the office said that he would read the stories, and if he liked them, he would print them in the paper. She was very excited. Lowry said he had a secret too. He told her that he knew where Meg's lost glove was. His teacher, Mr. Brook, had it. He kept it in his pocket all the time, but one day he dropped it, and Lowry saw it. Lowry told Joe, "I think Mr. Brook loves Meg and wants to marry her one day." Joe was very upset by this news. She wished that Lowry had not told her. She didn't want anyone to take Meg away. Joe decided to play like a boy. She ran down a hill with Lowry. Meg saw them and told Joe that she should start behaving like a lady instead of a little girl. Then she told them about Belle Moffat's wedding. It was a beautiful wedding. Belle and her husband were going to Paris for a holiday. Joe asked Meg if she envied them. Meg said that she did. That's good," said Joe. "That means that you won't go and marry a poor man." Meg wondered what she meant, but Joe would not say any more. For the next few weeks, Joe behaved strangely. She rushed to get the paper every morning. Sometimes she would go up to Meg and kiss her. At other times, she just sat and looked at Meg sadly. It was very strange. One day, the paper arrived, and Joe was very excited. The girls soon discovered that the one of Joe's stories was in the paper. They liked the story very much and were very proud of their sister. November said, "Meg is the worst month of the year." She complained that she had too much work and not enough time to play. It seemed very boring to her. Beth looked out of the window. She saw Mummy coming through the front gate. Mummy came in and asked if there was a letter from Father. The mail had not arrived. The doorbell rang and Hannah came in with a telegram. Mummy opened it. She read it. She fell into her chair as if she had been shot. She was white. Meg took the telegram and read it. This is what it said: "Mrs. March, your husband is very well. Mrs. March, your husband is very ill. Come at once, Washington Hospital." Suddenly, the whole world changed. The bright sunny day became dark, and the room was full of crying. Mummy soon stopped. I must go at once," she said. "I hope it is not too late. Girls, help me to get ready." She sent Lowry to send a telegram to Washington and take a note to Aunt March. She needed to borrow some money from her. She sent Joe to Mrs. King with a message. Beth had to go to Mr. Lawrence and ask for some bottles of wine for her father. Amy had to help Hannah get some things ready, and Meg had to help Mummy put her clothes in a suitcase. Everybody was very busy. Mr. Lawrence came in with Beth bringing some wine and other things that Mr. March might need. He promised to look after the girls while Mummy was away. He said that Mr. Brook would go to Washington with Mummy to help her. Lowry came back with some money from Aunt March. She also sent a note. It said that Mr. March should not have gone to the war. She hoped that they would take her advice next time. Mummy put the note in the fire and put the money in her purse. Joe took her message to Mrs. King and wondered what else could do to help her father. She knew that Mummy needed money. She went to the hairdresser and sold her hair to him. It was beautiful hair, and she thought she looked very bad without it. But she got some money and gave it to her mother. 
Mommy and the girls were very surprised. They couldn't believe what she did. She did look very strange with all her hair cut off. Nobody slept very well that night. Early the next morning, Mommy and Mr. Brook went to the station to catch the train to Washington. They went in Mr. Lawrence's carriage. Everyone was sad to see them go and hoped that Mr. March would be well again soon. How strange and empty the house was without Mami in it. The girls did their best to continue their lives as usual. Meg went to the Kings and Joe went to Aunt March. Beth and Amy stayed home and helped Hannah in the house. They soon had news from Mr. Brooke and Mami. Father was getting better. Mr. Brooke sent a letter every day, and Meg read them for everyone to hear. Of course, they wrote to Mami. Meg wrote about the girls and how they behaved. Joe wrote about an argument she had with Laurie and included a poem. Beth didn't write much, but told Mami that she did not forget any of the little jobs she had. Amy wrote about her lessons with her clothes. Hannah wrote about the running of the house and told Mrs. March that everything was going well. Lowry wrote a note too, and even his grandfather wrote, offering any help that he could. Everyone hoped that father would get well and that Mommy and Mr. Brooke would come home soon.